What I was talking about today was the, uh, the importance really of designing medical technology, whether that's devices or diagnostics or digital health, uh, right from the very early stage to make sure that it's easy to use and also safe to use. I think the key message is, uh, is to two groups of people. One is to industry, which is to say that you should engage uh, with clinical testing facilities as early as possible. Even right at the sort of concept stage, you should bring it to clinical staff and experts in testing to work out whether it has any chance of being used, whether there's any chance of being safe. And then I think also to the healthcare uh, professionals, who I think should insist that the devices and technology that they are asked to use are safe to use by design. I think the medical device regulations as they're going to be from next year and also the standards have come a very long way. Uh, and I think they form an excellent basis for much safer use design. I think it's how they're interpreted and how they're enforced. And I think uh, certainly if as a clinician we should insist that both the regulators and the notified bodies, for example, insist that use and usability are part of the device's technical file. But it's extremely important that anybody, be that a patient or a clinician um, or, or a medical engineer, if there's a problem with the device, that they report it. They will report it locally uh, to their trust. It's very important that trust then reports it back centrally because it may only happen once in your trust, but if it's happened once in lots of trusts, then it becomes very important. Traditionally, we've talked about user error, and that very much suggests that the problem lies with the person using the device. And I think we need to move away from that. We need to insist that use error, in terms of how it is made to be easier to use, is enforced. And I think, therefore, as we move away from that, we should insist that manufacturers look at use errors, not user errors. And what they can no longer do is hide behind a complex instructions for use, and then say, well, if you'd read all of this, it would have been easier to use. It doesn't mean there shouldn't be instructions for use. Of course there should. But it needs to make sure that the device is also easy to use as well as having the instructions. I think it's extremely important to try and have what we would call a common interface. If you take a, a device that has a lot of issues, which is a thing like an infusion pump, there is no agreed uh, control panel. There's no agreed interface. And I think like a car, most of us have a car in which the steering wheel goes the same way, the pedals are in the same place. We all do. We should make sure medical devices are made easy to use by having a common user interface. But I think there are other aspects, like making them intuitive, uh, like making it difficult to do the wrong thing. What I'd like people to take back uh, from what I've said today, I think, is perhaps a, a greater understanding of what there is out there. I think to understand they have much more power to influence how technology is developed than they think. I think we're very used to things just arriving on the doorstep. Uh, and I think we should turn around and say, no, that's not good enough. We want to be involved, we want to help, and we want to make sure that new technology is easy to use. And we are, uh, all organizations involved in this are looking at volunteers. They could be patients, they may be staff, and we're looking for volunteers to help us do the work. And I'd like people to take away the idea that that's something worth doing.